Amen. Let somebody say amen. 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 Can somebody just put your hand together? Tell God, thank you. Amen. 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 The song says that to praise him. Amen. Let us, um, I want to invite your attention to the book of Exodus, the Old Testament book of Exodus. I want to today, today, you know, look at a very familiar portion of scripture, but hopefully that God will illuminate this in a way that he hasn't done before, that you and I would be drawing closer to him as we also strive to be drawing closer towards each other, that we can be as my old platoon song used to say, that we can work like a hand in a glove. Exodus chapter number four, I would like to start our reading at verse number one. Exodus chapter number four, starting in verse number one. In the King James Version of the Scriptures, you shall find these words. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord has not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thy hand? And he said, Arise. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from it. But the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thy hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. And verse number five says, And they may believe that the Lord God of thy fathers, of the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has appeared unto thee. My brothers and my sisters, the time that has been given to me on this morning, I want to simply talk to you from the subject I really just ask all of us a question. What is in your hand? Let us pray. Father God, we come to you right now, God, only as humbly as we would know how. Mm -hmm. And Father God, we're reminded of the old song that says, there's not a friend mm -hmm. like the lowly Jesus, no, not one. Father God, before we would go another step further, God, before we would even utter another phrase, God, we just want to take a pause and just to say thank you. And God, we come to you, God, with our open Bibles. And God, allow us to open up our hearts and also, God, our minds. And God, is our prayer that while we're so opened and while we are so exposed, that you would take this time to insert your word into our hearts, into our mind, that we would know and understand and do what you have placed in our hands to do. So, Father God, we do thank you and we do bless you. In Jesus' name we say, Amen. And you see, my brothers and sisters, see, see our text for today says, what is in your hand? And so some of us will remember, if you allow me to catch you up, that, that Moses was on the backside of the desert. And he was on the backside of the desert. He was tending his, his, his father-in-law's sheep, Jephra. But one day he came and saw this burning bush. But what was unique about this bush, because Moses walked in the desert and he saw bushes burning before, but what was unique about this bush that even though it was burning, it was not consumed. So you see, this bush caught his eye. So he went on to investigate this bush and then God spoke to him out of this bush and told him that he heard the cry 
of his children and that Moses was to go back and to rescue and to deliver them out of the hand of their taskmaster, Pharaoh. And so, but we come up to chapter number four when, when, when Moses kind of has some backlash. He kind of is, is relenting. He kind of is looking as you and I would do, looking for excuses not to go and do what God has said to do. And God asked him this question. He said, Moses, what is that in your hand? And he said, a rod. And God said, cast it to the ground. And you see, when he cast it to the ground, it became a snake. But you see, Moses fled because not only it was a snake, but it was a poisonous snake. So, so he fled. But God says, take it by the tail. And Moses took it by the tail and it became a rod in his hand. And so, so today, I just want to simply talk to you from the asking, what is that in your hand? Because I really want us to get to the point and really want us to understand that God wants to use what we already have to propel us to what he's called us to do. Can I get a witness? And so here's so our outline is real, very simple. I don't plan to be for you very long. But first of all, I want to look at the question. And secondly, let's consider the command. So without any further ado, let us look at this. And so God said, God says, God asked Moses. He said, Moses. Moses, what's that in your hand? And Moses said, it's a rod. Meaning that this is just the stick. This is just a, a, what I use to, to shepherd the flock. So it's probably a long stick with a crook. And many times the shepherd will use this, this, this stick or this rod to guide the sheep. Many times they will use this rod that had a hook on it to pull the sheep to where they need to go so that they can get to where their destination was. And so he said, this is just a simple old rod. This is just a, a dirty old stick that's got sand on it that, that had that all I do is I use this to do my job. But you see, we see that, that then God says, throw it down. He said, cast it to the ground. And, 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 and as he cast it to the ground, it became a snake. And most theologians believe that, it, that not only it became a snake, but it became a cobra. It, it became a cobra. My, my mind, my, my mind goes back to to a time when I was a young boy. I was a young boy, and and, and the YMCA had this camp. YMCA had this camp, and, and and mommy got a little pennies together, you know, so she can get a break in the summer, and she sent me down to this YMCA camp. And so, and so as, as, as young boys do, we got mischievous. And so we, so down the, where we stayed was down the hill where was the, 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 the bathroom and where, where was the, and so we told some of the guys that there was a cobra in the bathroom. We told them there was a cobra in the bathroom, but what we had did on the trail, we got a, we got a string, we got some rope, and we put some dirt on it, and two guys were on the trail. So when we told them there was a cobra, so of course, uh, see, the guys, they, they ran down and see the cobra, so two guys would pull a string and we would trip them, and we would laugh, and we would laugh at them, because guess what? You need to know that there's no cobras in Maryland. So, so, so we were teaching you a lesson. So I guess said that to bring some humor, but, 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 but understand this. That it was probably a cobra because on in Egypt on Pharaoh's headdress, it was a sign of a cobra's head. And what the cobra represented, it represented royalty and also represented um, sovereignty. And so, but when Moses saw when he cast down his rod, God said, What's that in your hand? He said, A rod. So he said, Cast it down. So as, as Moses cast it down, it became a snake. Now, because more than likely it was a cobra, he fled from it. And so, and so I can feel you, Mo, because I know that if it was me, that I would have done some fleeing, too. I, I know if it was me, that I, I would have been a little hesitant, too. But God said, notice, but God said, take it by the tail. See, you need to understand that nobody in their right mind grabs a snake by the tail. You need to understand that, that, that because why? If I grab it by the tail, his head is free to swing around. Invite me. Can, can I get a witness? So, 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 no, so most people, when they grab a snake or they try to get a snake, they get it as close to the head as possible so they can immobilize the bite. Can I get a witness? And so, but, but, but God said, Mo, what I want you to do is I want you to grab this poisonous snake by the tail. 
And so, so when Moses grabbed it by the tail, the Bible said it became a rod in his hand. But watch this now. Now it was no longer called Moses' rod, but it became the rod of God. So now this rod can separate the Red Sea. Now this rod can turn the river Nile into blood. Now this rod can do all types of things. And what I'm trying to get somebody to see, what I'm trying to get somebody to understand is that God wants to use what's in your hand to propel you to where you need to be. And so many times, many times, I'm like Moses. God says, son, what's that in your hand? I'm saying it's just, it's, it's just what I use to do my job. It just the hunt, it does not it does not amount to anything, but God wants to transform that. See, 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 understand this. When I place my ordinary things and I get under under the direction of God, God can change that. So God wants to so God can use a stick. Watch me now to free his people. God can use a stick to, 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 to separate the river now. God can use, but God said, God said, what's Moses? Moses, what's in your hand? And so ne 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 next, watch me now, but God said, but Moses cast it and God gave him a command. He said, throw it down. But God, this is my, this is my rod. I need this to do my job. Without a without a rod, I can't shepherd the, the I can't shepherd the sheep. Without a rod, I can't protect the sheep. Without a rod, so but God, you want me to throw down what I need to do my job. See, see, watch me now. See, can I obey God when it does not make sense? So God, why do you want me to cast this down when you know that I need it? When you know that I rely on it. See, see, sometimes, watch me now. See, it, 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 I have to obey God even when it hurts. I have to learn to obey God even when it does not make sense. So, so can I really follow God to come and talk to me, Abraham? The Bible says that, that God came to Abraham. He take thy son, the son that you love, Isaac. So with any doubt, who God was talking about. <laughs> he let you know that not, not just any son, but the one that you love, your Isaac, meaning the one that all of your blessing is tied into. See, God told Abraham, look at the stars. And, and see, as many as the stars are there, those are going to be your descendants. But guess what? Abraham did not have a son. So when he had a son, all of his blessings were tied into Isaac. But God said to Abraham, Take Isaac and sacrifice and give him to me. See, that does not make sense, God. I done waited 25 years, God, for you to bless me with Isaac. And now you're telling me I got to sacrifice him? Because, God, that does not make sense. See, hold up, God. God, that is not logical. Why? God, why do you give me something? Watch it now. And want me to give it back to you. See, why are you, but, 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 but see, when I learn to trust God, even, guess what, when it does not make sense, even when I trust God, see, even when it, when it hurts, see, see, this is not logical. And, and let, 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 let me back up for just a moment. See, understand this, see, I don't know about you, but if God says, cast it down, and it became a snake, and he says, Take it by the tail. Hold up, God. We got to talk about this. <laughs> we need some conversation because I, I, I'm not, I'm not picking up no cobra by the tail. I, I understand, God. God, we got to have more than a history of you showing up in the desert in a burning bush. For me, yeah, maybe y'all gotta pray for me, but I'm not there yet. Maybe you gotta you, you gotta fast and pray because I I need some more conversation, God. I need some more stuff to go on before I can grab this cobra by the tail. See, I, I would see, I don't know about you, but I, me and snakes, we don't get along. You know, you stay over there, I'll stay over here. And so I remember even being in, in basic training, and they had found the snake at the end of the, the, the um, bayonet course. 
and they all running over there wanting to see the snake. I stay where I'm at. You know, he's fine over there. So, so, so it's going to take, so God, hold up. It's going to take some conversation for me to grab a snake. Right. And but guess what? Then when I grab it and it becomes a rod, I'm, I'm looking at this rod funny. I, I don't know when it might change back into a snake. I don't know. So guess what? This, this, this rod, it wouldn't be in my tent no more because I don't know. See, I might be, see, see, see because if it changed, I want to see it change so that I can run. So it's not, it's not in my tent. It's not because I don't want this, this, this rod to turn back into a snake. And when I'm sleeping, so I can't get away from it. Guess what? This, this I, I would have had a, a, a guard rod box. Every time I lock in this rod up in the box, and so God, so because I don't know when it's gonna change back. So, so, so God, see, 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 see. What? But the question is, is God really sovereign in your life? The question is, is God really God? See, can I trust God when it does not make sense? You can, 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 can I trust God? See, 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 guess what? See, it's going to take a lot for me to grab this thing by the tail. But, but, but now, every day, you want me to walk and remind me that this thing can change. <laughs> this thing can change back into a snake any old time. But, but the question on the floor, see, see we, we in church, and you listen to me in church, and, and, and it's easy to talk about how God is so high I can't get over him, and so wide I can't get around him, and so low I can't get how we talk about he's a way maker, and he's, a, he, he, he's, he's my buckler, he's my sword and my shield, and, and we talk all that smack about how good God is, but guess what, but when the rubber Meets the road in my life, can I trust God? When God is telling me to grab a snake by the tail, can I trust him? When God is, is telling me to do something in my life that really does not make sense. When God is asking me for my Isaac, but God, I prayed, I fasted for this, I worked for this, you know, all my life, but now you want me to give it up. Now you want me to say, so, so can I really trust God? See, the question on the floor is, will you give God your Isaac? See, will you give God that which is so precious to you? That which you look at, the all of your blessing is tied into that. So if you don't have that, then your blessings are out of the out of the window. So can you give God your Isaac? See, for see, see, see my Isaac, guess what? One thing is something that's dear to me. Because he said, take your son, your only son, the one that you love, and give it to me. And so, but can I really give God that which is precious to me? Because watch me now, because I said, see, if I continue, I continue to hold on to it, then I can never go to the next level. And so, so God told Moses, he said, to throw it down. And when he threw it down, but he picked it, when he, but it became a snake, but as he picked, but, but as he turned, but as it became a snake, God said, grab it. By the tail. Here's the principle. Don't miss it. I must be willing to lay down what I have in order to pick up something better. So, so if I continue to hold on to my rod, if I continue to hold on to my Isaac, I will never be able to get something better. Because see, God is saying, give it to me. See, but notice to see God changed his rod, the rod of Moses, into the rod of God. Right. See, once he picked it up, it became something better. Once, so, but many times, but many times, see, I'm holding on to what I have, but God is saying, will you give it to me? God is saying, will you trust me with that? God is saying, do you really believe that I am God Almighty and that I'm God all by myself? See, 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 do you really believe? See, sometimes see, we get these blessings 
from God and we hold on to them and God is saying that's just a stepping stone because I want to take the rod being the rod of Moses being a rod of Todd being a rod of Mel and I want to take that I want to turn that into the rod of God so now guess what you, you're no longer shepherding sheep with that rod but now you're part in Red Seas so now you do a supernatural thing since they, 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 they teach a thing in, in, in war, talking about that I have to be willing to lose the battle in order to win the war. See, see, let, let, let me explain this to you. Let me explain this to you that, that up until the Vietnam War, we fought on lines. We fought in lines. So if you we watch like movies about um, World War II, we're talking about the Russian front. So we fought in lines. Even in the, in the, in the Roman army, they fought in lines. But in Vietnam, we, we, we fought, we didn't necessarily fight the lines, we changed the way that we fought wars because many times we would take a hill and then we would come back and take another hill. Why? Because this one back here was more advantaged. But you see, in our mindset, when, where we fight wars, we're always moving forward. So when you tell me to take this hill, then you tell me to back up and take this other over here, even though I had the better vantage point, I'm saying we're losing the war. And this is why, you know, starting with the Vietnam War was so unpopular because we're saying we're backing up, but I'm not really backing up. But sometimes I have to give up this hill so that I can get a better hill. Can I get a witness? So sometimes, so sometimes in my life, see, that, that's why we have to learn, guess what, to pick my battles. See, if I try to fight all of my battles, I'll end up being frustrated. I'll end up being defeated. And so I'll end up, I'll end up even if I get so bad to lash it out on you. But watch me now. But, 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 the, but the principle is that I have to be willing to lay down what God has blessed me with in order that I may get something better. So I have to decide, do I really want all that God has for me? See, 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 I come to church and I can talk all my smack. I can talk all my stuff, talk about how, how God, how God's my, 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 my sword and my shield. How, how God's such a way maker and how, how God is all of this, but, 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 but I can praise God. Watch me now when my, when my cupboards are full. I can praise God when I have enough money in the bank. I can praise God when, when, when I can do the things that I want to do, but can I still give God some glory? When I don't have any food in the cupboard, can I get a witness? Can I still give God the praise when, when I don't have enough money in the bank and I got more week left? Can I still give God the glory? So is he really God in my life? Or is this just something that I like to say? Is this is something that I say when I'm around you because why well, nobody's going to disagree with me. No, no, nobody's going to be in opposition with me because it's easy, guess what, to praise God up in here, up in here, up in here. But can I praise him? When I don't know, we you know what, 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 where my next meal is coming from. Can I praise him when I don't know how the situation on work is going to work out? But can I still give him that glory? And can I really be willing to lay down what God has given me in order that I may pick up something better? And so, so the question on the floor is really do I trust God? Really do I rely on him? Or is it just something that I say? Is it just thing that I, that I go through? See, as I go, as I prepare to hasten to my seat, the Bible says, but the trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. Yeah. You see, 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 in all my ways, if I will acknowledge him, he will direct my path. See, when I, I trust God and I don't lean towards my own Understanding. See, see, many times we spend so much time leaning. I, 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 I don't. I lean to this opinion. I lean to that opinion. I, 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 I remember when I was a when I was a young boy, around nine or ten, and I was going, I, I, I'm going in my grandfather's basement, and not, not the one that me and Pastor shared, but I go in the basement and I discovered. These Bill Cosby albums. I discovered these Bill Cosby albums, and so and so so one of the albums Bill was talking about how him and his friend Henry Russell would go down to the movies, 
house and watch these scary movies. And how he's talking about the movie was so scary that they didn't watch the movie. They were down. Some of you remember down on the floor in the movies when there's all those juju bees and you remember you would go to the movies and you, and you come out and the bottom of your shoe was all black from all that candy that everybody got. So, so, so they were, so, but then Bill said as they walked home, they would have to travel this alley. And so Bill would say as he walked home that they walked, they did not lift up their feet and walk, but they kind of shuffled their feet because they said if, if, a, if a ghost or something jumped out, they didn't want to go sideways, they wanted to jump straight up. <laughs> and so, and so, and so, 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 but why? Because they did not want to lean to their own understanding. See, the Bible says, if I learn to trust God with all my heart, see, all means all. I need to be willing to get to the point where I trust God with all that I have and not lean to my own understanding because many times, watch me now, see, I don't live by God's revelation. I live by my reasoning. Many times I talk myself out of what God has said and I begin to rely on what I think. And, and what makes matters even worse is that I, I get people that's going to agree with me. See, 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 I, 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 I may come to the pastor, but because he's going to tell me what God says, see, I don't want to hear that. I want somebody that's going to agree with me. I want somebody to tell me that I can do it my own Way I, I was talking to somebody that called me, that, you know, a little while back, and they were asking me about 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 trucks, about, about trucks, and so we were talking about we're going back and forth, and they had they kept on bringing up this certain type of a truck and certain type of SUV, and I was telling them about different things, different other ones, and so we're going back and forth. It kind of dawned on me, they didn't call me for my advice. They called me because they wanted me to agree with them the type of truck that they wanted to buy. See, this is what we do. We find people that's going to agree with us instead of finding those people that's going to give us what God says. As a friend of mine, they give us what God loves, which is the truth. And so, so but we find people that's going to agree with me. So well, guess what? If, I, if you don't agree with me, guess what? I'll, I'll cash you out. I'll leave you all. It's going to be I need somebody that's going to agree with me instead of somebody that's going to give me the truth. But the Bible says, if I trust in the Lord with all my heart and I lean not to my own, understanding, but if I begin to acknowledge him in all my ways, acknowledge him in everything that I do, meaning that everything that I do, meaning that, 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 that as we do many times, watch me now, but when we come to one another's house, we lie to him. You know, we, uh, come, you come to my house, I'm going to lie to you, I'm going to say, make yourself at home, and I don't really mean it, I mean, make yourself semi-comfortable in this one room. I'm letting you in. Then to get a witness. I, I, I believe I'm not the only one. And so, and so, and so, and so but, and this is what we do with God. We don't, we say, God, make yourself at home, but I don't really mean it. I say, God, you can just come in this little area right here. God, you free to do your thing right here, but God, don't go in the basement. God, don't go in the closet because that's off limits to you. But if I, but, but if I acknowledge him, in all my ways, you know, allowing God to come in and go in every room of my life and to fix up what he needs to fix up and to change what needs to be changed. And so if I allow him to go and fix everything, as the Bible says, if I, allow, if I lean not to my own, and if I acknowledge him in all my ways, the Bible says, watch this now, that he will direct my path. And one translation says it this way, that he will make my path straight. Meaning that, that he will show me the way that I should go. That's why the Bible says what the Bible, the word is a lamp unto my feet. Mm -hmm. A lamp is different than a flashlight. See, a flashlight, I just shine on certain areas that I want to see. But a lamp will light up the whole place. And so as I'm walking, as his word is a lamp unto my feet, now I can look there and I can see where to step. I can see if there are any holes. I can see if there, 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 there are any pitfalls. I can see if there are any old things. So, so, so I, I share this with you. I was kind of embarrassed. I was, I was in the house, and I had my little flip-flop things on, and I was running up the steps, and they, you know how they come off, and they, I tripped, and I fell down on the steps. I fell down going up the steps. I fell down going up the steps. <laughs> <laughs> I, on, on the steps. So I know I was getting old because I fell down and my toe 
it was bruised. It was bruised because I, I'm running up the steps. But, but guess what? But, but the Bible says his, his word is a lamp so I can see where to go. I can see how to go. But guess what? Even as I can see, God will let me how to move. Because sometimes it's for me to hurry up, but sometimes it's for me to take my time. Because why? It's all according to God's purpose. So he said, trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding. In all my ways, acknowledge him. He will direct your path. So the question on the floor today that God wants to know, what is in your hand? And will you place what you have in your hand in, under the, the control of God? So God can change that rod of Todd, that rod of Moses, that, that rod of Lindsay. Can God change that and make it into a rod of God? Because God wants to take what we already have. So you see, many times, see, I'm praying for more. Yeah. But God said, you already have what you have. You just placed it under my control. I will transform that into the rod of God. My time is up, and I want to thank you for yours. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you, God, for who you are. And God, we want to continue, God, to thank you, God, for what you are in our lives today. So God, we come here to give you glory, and God, to give you praise for the great God that you are. And Father God, we thank you, God, for reminding us that we don't necessarily have to pray for more, but how if we give what we have to you, if we place what we have under your control, under your direction, how you can transform what we already have to repel us to where we need to be. So Father, we do thank you and we do bless you. In Jesus' name we say, Amen. 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 You may be here today. You may be listening to us by way of Facebook, by way of Zoom, and later on by way of YouTube and TikTok from, from other social medias. And so you may be at a place today where you can't recall a time or a place where you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. The Bible declares it like this, that if I would confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, and that I would believe in my heart that he is Lord, the Bible says I shall be saved. The Bible goes on to say, So who shall, shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. I just want to say this as simply as I can. As simply as A, B, C. I accept him as my Lord and my Savior. I believe yeah. that he died for my sins. I confess him as my Lord and my Savior. The Bible says I'm guaranteed that I shall be saved. I want to lead us in a prayer. And I want to guarantee you by the authority of the word of God, if you pray this for the first time and you really mean it, you will be translated from being a sinner doomed to hell to being a saint on your way to heaven. Father, I want to thank you that you sent the Lord Jesus to die on the cross to pay the Christ for my sins. So God, I accept him as my Lord and also as my Savior. And God, I confess that before men that I would be saved. And God, now I believe, oh God, that you have translated me because I believe in Jesus as my Lord and Savior from being a normal person into a saint of God. So, Father God, I do thank you and do I do bless you. In Jesus' name, I say amen. I want to say to you today that if you have prayed that for the first time and maybe you have rededicated yourself using the Isaiah Baptist Church to lead you to there, I want to say that you can put a, a message in our inbox 
that you can contact us and we'll be happy to pray for you. We'll be happy to direct you to the place where you can go and learn more about the things of God, that you can be all that God has called for you to be. So again, we want to thank you and we want to bless you. Now, unto him who is able to keep us from falling. To the unwise God, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. In Jesus' name, we say, Amen. come here, you have tuned in to worship. Now let us leave to serve. And remember that whatever you go through, that God loves you best. You may go in peace and thank you. Amen. Amen.